Hey guys, in this video, I'll share my sanitation routine during this special time. My nails grow so fast and most times I procrastinate about cutting them. But since this outbreak, not anymore. Cutting my nails is now on top of my sanitation routine. With my nails very short, I am sure that when I wash my hands, I get a good wash. Nothing will be hiding in my nail bed. In these times we live in and where I live, I live in Spain, those who do not work in essential services are at home 99.9% .9 of the time. The remaining 0.1% of the time, we need to go out and buy food. Yeah. While you can buy in bulk and stock up, there are certain foods that you can't store for a long time. Some foods and ingredients, once they go into the freezer, they come out useless because the freezer changes their state a lot so we still need to go out and buy food it's allowed here it's safe to do so as you have seen in my videos we observe safety distance or social distance if you may call it that so i believe that it's generally safe i mean the first time i went out there was fear in the land but as you do it you know you learn from experience you adjust your procedure but yeah we still need to go out and buy food while taking extreme care. Being safety conscious starts the moment I open the door of my apartment. The moment I open the door and step out, I assume that I and everything on me are contaminated. Once outside, I try to imagine the virus everywhere I look. This helps me to be mindful of what I touch, who and what I stand close to, etc. Three things I do not leave my home without. My hand sanitizer, wipes these wipes do not disinfect i have to pour my hand sanitizer on them to make them so there are several of them in this pack so i use and throw away as i go and the third one a smile <laughs> you know some people are expecting me to come here crying doom end of the world this and that but <laughs> there are other people that need this smile we need to smile through it all some people do not have any social contact whatsoever with another person at this time. You know, in the evenings, people are used to, especially now that we have good weather, people are used to coming out, having a chat with people on the streets, going to the bar. But now they don't go anywhere and they live alone. A lot of people are not taking the situation we find ourselves in very well. A lot of people are depressed. So when I go out and I see these people, I smile at them. Even while you're wearing a mask, you can smile with your eyes. Yeah, you never know what that smile can do to another person. We don't wear our sadness on our faces because this is life. It's called adaptation. We just handle the curveball that life is throwing at us the way we see fit. That is life. That's the way the world works. So that I am not here crying or showing a sad face or asking for your pity does not mean that we are not going through tough times. We are, but we are all in this together. If I come here and start crying, who will console me? Is it the people that are passing through the same thing? Mba no. <laughs> Guys, even before this outbreak, I've always used my keys to press the elevator buttons. I do not touch communal surfaces anyhow because people put their hands and fingers in strange places and then touch these buttons and handrails. Oh. Modern elevator buttons work by what is known in electronic engineering as capacitive sensing. A human body is a conductor, that's why our fingers work. A key works because it is metal, hence conducts electricity from your hands to the elevator sensors. A toothpick or a matchstick will not work because wood is not a conductor. Wood cannot store a charge. Let's leave it there. <laughs> I open all communal doors with my elbow when it's not practical to use my elbow. For instance, when you have to pull the door after opening, I use my wipe as a barrier between my hand and the door handle. Then throw whatever I use into the nearest bin. Mask, mask, mask. Much ado about masks and gloves. To wear them or not to wear them. Wearing of masks is not yet a requirement here in Spain, even though they recommend it because they found out that some people are asymptomatic, which means that they may have it and not show the symptoms. They recommend that you wear it. I don't wear a mask because one, I don't have a mask. I said that in another video. I can make a mask, but I've seen people, when I go out, I see people that wear masks, they're always adjusting the mask, so 
uh, that has actually put me off wearing masks because I believe that it will make me touch my face more. What I do is to make sure I give enough distance from the next person. Yes, I know some people do not mind. They don't give the required social distance. But what I do is I run from them. I'm not a tree. I can still move, can't I? So whenever I'm taking something from the shelves in the supermarket and somebody feels the need to come close to me and start taking the same thing that I'm trying to take, I just run. <laughs> Nobody has got time to be playing that I got here before you game. So I just give them space. They can take whatever they want to take. And when they're done, I'll come back and take mine. Because <laughs> Giving the next person adequate social distance will mean that if the person talks or if the person sneezes suddenly, if the person is not wearing a mask, the droplets from the person talking, the person sneezing, will not fall on you or worse, fall on your face. So that's why you need to give distance. Social distancing cannot be overemphasized. Even if you're wearing a mask or not, keep the distance. Yeah, you don't want to be gumming body. <laughs> then hand gloves, to wear or not to wear. The first time I went to the supermarket after this whole lockdown, I wore gloves because I felt they were the safest thing to do, but they made me make a lot of mistakes. So I came back, reviewed my procedure. Yes, now we need well curated procedures to live our lives on these contaminated streets. So I decided that I will not wear gloves anymore unless when absolutely necessary. Here in Spain, we've always had hand gloves in the fruits and vegetables section of our supermarkets. They display the fruits and vegetables without packaging and you have to handle them with gloves. You put the number of fruits you want in a plastic bag, then go and weigh it. So I wear a glove on one hand. When I go to weigh it, I use the gloved hand to press the buttons on the scale. Then I use my ungloved hand <laughs> to take the sticker that comes out. And it's not like gloves will save you from infection. The moment you put on gloves, they're like your hands. You still can't touch your face while wearing gloves. When you remove the gloves, you still need to wash and disinfect your hands. So I will rather use my hands. Our hands are impermeable. Yeah, the virus cannot get into the body through the hands. But when the hands are infected and, and it touch my face, uh, then the virus will be able to get to my throat and my lungs, through my nose, eyes, mouth. Our supermarkets are doing their own part. I must give it to them. They're doing their own part in stopping this virus in its tracks. They now have staff dedicated to disinfecting the handles of shopping carts and shopping baskets. They also distribute gloves at the entrance of the supermarket to those who want them. They also pre-pack some items for us these days. All these things that are here now, wrapped in small plastic bags, all these things, they were not like this before, they were put in containers. Look at the containers they were put in before, such that you come and then you take this, scoop the quantity you want, measure it over there and wrap for yourself. But now, because they don't want you to be touching all those scoops, they wrapped it for you. So I want to buy Akiao Sada's Tiger Nuts. So it's already been measured out. <laughs> so I continue shopping using my gloved hand to pick up items from the shelves, always maintaining safety distance from people. I use my gloved hand for one more thing, that is entering my pin at the checkout counter. These days, all card companies have increased their minimum amount you will have to enter a pin for when paying for cards. This is to minimize people touching that pin pad and picking up the virus. But still, I have to enter my pin because we spend more than the new minimum amount per week on food anyway. So as soon as I enter my pin, I throw away the glove and disinfect my hands with my hand sanitizer. When I come back home, I do not touch the door. I don't unlock the door myself. I press the doorbell with my key. Whoever opens the door for me stands back, distancing themselves from me. No hugs, nothing. Remember, I and everything I came back with are assumed to be infected. My husband does the same when he comes back from work. When I've brought in everything, the person that opened the door for me closes it. Then I take everything to the balcony. We use our balcony as our quarantine room. Everybody needs a quarantine room 
quarantine space at this time you can be like us and use your balcony if you have one if you don't have a balcony you can use a spare room or a secluded corner or a cupboard anywhere none of your family members can get to so that you can come in throw some things in there and leave them there for days <laughs> yeah in my going to hospital video i talked about how long the virus survives on different surfaces the more impermeable the surface is the longer the virus will survive on it making plastics glass stainless steel the surfaces that the virus can survive the longest on so if i keep everything i brought in from outside at the balcony for three days the virus would die off we assume so because according to them the longest they can stay on some of the surfaces is 72 hours but i can't keep these out here for three days i need to put them away in the cupboards in the fridge in the freezer so i disinfect them but first of all i remove my jacket and other clothes and hang them outside on the balcony these ones can stay here for as long as possible after all i only go out once a week these days i disinfect my keys glasses my phone Wash my hands with soap very well. Yes, these days we wash our hands like surgeons. I even wash my hands more than 20, so that's recommended 20 seconds because, yeah. Oh. You go do bow for this thing. <laughs> because this social isolation, they say, you can only do it outside. You can't do it for your family members when you're in here. And as long as you're going out and coming in, you're at risk as soon as you step out of your door and you never know you can bring in anything and the whole family will catch it so that's the thing if it's social isolation that you don't go out at all then you know that you're safe with your family members but once you go out hmm. okay should be fine When done, I apply a hand sanitizer. I learned this dipping of my fingertips in the sanitizer from Abena's Ward. Check out her video. And my short nails will ensure that the sanitizer gets into my nail bed and do the job very well, yeah. Then I take a shower, a very hot shower. I'm someone that is used to taking a hot shower anyway, yeah. When I finish showering, you can't see in the bathroom, there'll be steam everywhere. <laughs> Hey, I take a hot shower where I scrub my face and all openings on my face. Yeah, I get in there into my nostrils and scrub everything very well. Scrub my hands again with soap and sponge. I change into my home cloth, then come out and unpack, clean and put away all the food. I wipe down the cardboard packaging with disinfected wipes. Wipe down the plastic wraps and cartons.
kitchen table. For pressure wrapped items, I actually wash them with hot water in the sink <laughs> with dishwashing liquid and a sponge. Items like these eggs come in a crate as well as a thin plastic wrapping. So I just carefully take off the plastic wrapping. Same goes for this milk. When done, I spread the shopping bags out here till next time. They will be here for at least a week before I need to use them again. By then, every spirit of Koro would have left them. Kia kia. I've been here for a long time, so every row Koro, <laughs> every Rona, <laughs> all the names you guys have been calling this Koro, still he doesn't want to hear a word. Yeah. Maybe it's annoyed that you people are calling it names, calling it names outside of its name. <laughs> the fear of you too. <laughs> when done, I wash my hands again and disinfect. That's my sanitation and safety routine. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, please give it a like to appreciate the work I did to bring this video to your screens. Gathering all these clips to illustrate what I'm saying in this video was not easy at all. Stay home, stay safe. Bye-bye, see you soon.